My name is Joschka Wessels. I'm a filmmaker and a geographer. I've been fascinated by an ancient technology of tunnels that bring water to the desert. They are called kanats in Iran and Syria, or kares in North Iraq, or falaj in Oman, or khatara in Morocco, and fogara in Algeria. Originally developed in ancient Persia, you find this tunnel particularly in the Middle East and North Africa. In all of these places, I have filmed and documented kanats over the past 10 years. In this film, I want to show you how amazing this technology is and how, after 10 years, these tunnels still capture my imagination and keep fascinating me. The sheer effort of human beings in digging and maintaining these thousand-year-old water systems is enough to impress every visitor who encounters these tunnels. Let me lead you to the world of Kanats and show you how, until today, these systems are still most important. Let me first explain what these elusive kanats are. Kanats are subterranean tunnels that bring water to the surface using only gravity. Air shafts intersect the tunnel to provide oxygen for the workers. Scientists believe that the technique developed during the time of the Kingdom of Urartu in northern Persia. This would make the technology more than two and a half thousand years old. Until today, kanats are the most sustainable way of bringing water to the desert. The current problem with kanats worldwide is that they are rapidly drying up at a large scale. It's amazing to me how thousand-year-old technologies like kanats suddenly dry up over the past 20 years. Are the kanats telling us something? Has the world water crisis reached a tipping point? There are many reasons for the abandonment and drying up. Some of it is economical, people leaving agriculture and not maintaining the kanats anymore. Valuable local knowledge in irrigated agriculture is then lost. A kanat has a specific system of division of rights, of water rights, and that's according to timeshares. And these timeshares are either inherited or uh, sold or traded among the farmers themselves. Now this system um, is sometimes older than the population itself. Um, maybe it exists already since the uh, kanats were dug, which could be like thousands of years old. Um, but with the abandonment of the kanats and with the individual pumping, this particular system is also eroded and valuable indigenous knowledge is um, vanished. But some kanats are plainly abandoned because the supply dried up. Currently, many villages in North Iraq, for example, are in danger of dying because people are leaving the land. Uh, we're here in uh, Piskandi village, a small village at the base of the Piramagrun range, just north of uh, Slemania. Uh, there were six families living here um, as late as uh, late 2008, early 2009. Um, and the, both the Kares died in early 2009. Well, one completely died, barely seeping, it's unusable. Uh, the other one it ceased use as ablution water in 2009 for the men's mosque and now uh, is used only for drinking. It's really unsuitable for drinking. There's so little water seeping out, but it's their only source of drinking water, so they continue using it. It is communally owned and operated. The village collectively uh, um, collects a little bit of money from each house anytime they need some repairs, and they have indicated uh, willingness to donate labor and whatever time they can to try to repair this Kerez. Uh, they just don't have the tools and they don't have the, the knowledge for, for how to make their Kerez work again. And, uh, they have some kind of very vague plans about sinking a well or something. They're just basically desperate for water, which is why they're, you know, hauling in water via tractor um, now, just so that they can stay a little while longer until they seek a solution. They just really don't know where to turn. Hopefully this water will allow them to hang on a little longer.
This is uh, Piscandi Naude Carrez. This was their principal Carrez. This was also the Carrez you know, used for the men's mosque. Uh, this is the only one that's still flowing at all in such a way that it can be used. Yeah, th I mean, it's, yes, it's a sad story. This is all they have. This little bit dripping out of the pipe is all they have left for drinking water. The ongoing drought and signs of climate change throughout the Middle East over the past years have only made the importance of Kanats bigger. I see them as alarm bells ringing, warning us that if we do not start managing our water supply now, we will all lose. My own encounter with Kanats began in 1998. One day I crossed upon a village called Shalal Ezrire at the edge of the Syrian desert. Some 122 people were living here, and their only source of water was an ancient kanat. They called it Kanat Romani. This day was the start of a long-term connection with kanats that shaped my professional life as a filmmaker and a human geographer. In this village I spent a lot of time and I got to know the people very well. Not much later I became interested in the technology itself and found an article written by Dale Lightfoot from Oklahoma State University detailing the Kanats of Syria. My interest and amazement grew from then onwards. In 1999 I started a project to research and renovate the Kanat of Shalal Azrire together with the villagers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 